Hey guys, another war video for you here. Uh, as always, stick around for the end or skip to the end so you can see the player cards for this war. But uh, this one is up against the Matrix. Um, they were coming into this war pretty, uh, pretty hot. I think that they had beaten uh, ASR and uh, there are a couple other alliances that um, pretty impressive uh, fights against them, I think. So anyway, we are going to be on path five this war. Um, so I've just got this Venom here, nothing uh, too special. He does have power focus and unblockable L2. It's a good placement for him, but I'm just going to be using Quake, so I won't have to worry about that. Um, and then I'll be on path two yet again. I'll be quaking this, and then I've got a, uh, a Havoc here that I'm bringing Warlock for. I'll be quaking Morningstar and Guillotine, and then we've got another Mojo boss um, I'll be bringing magic and warlock um, just in case I, I needed to take him. I actually uh, had that fight assigned to uh, somebody else this war. So we're going to join up with what is quickly becoming my standard team at this point. At least it's the team I've used most this season in war. But um, so here I'm just going to use, um, you know, a six hour attack boost because I, I plan to, I just want to clear this uh, node 20 for legacy and uh, very, very straightforward fight here. Um, you know, really, I mean, the only thing that you need to worry about quaking venom, obviously, is if you get down to assassin range, I believe under 18% health, he also gains true strike. So you won't be able to quake him at all. Um, so, you know, it's just, uh, be smart and try not to get hit. And you'll kind of see throughout this war, um, there are instances where I go back and forth between deck style and parry style. Um, and, uh, you know, as, as I kind of talked about in the previous war video, it's really just like a, a, a comfort thing just making sure that I'm not uh, screwing anything up. But the more that I use Quake, the better I get with her a little bit with uh, Dexterity. And uh, eventually I'll get to the point where I can, you know, Dex all the fights without worrying about taking, you know, a hit or anything. So, um, <clears throat> all right, man thing here. I'll be using Quake. As you guys, uh, you know, I don't know if this is the first war video of mine that you've watched or if you have been paying attention to the war videos that I've been posting this season. But on this note, again, we've got Encroaching Stun. And what you want to do is just back up and start charging the heavy at 251. And if you do that, then the concussion that you place on uh, the defender will align with the Encroaching Stun timer and you won't, you won't be stunned. So, uh, you know, it's just yet another node that Quake just completely bypasses. Um, just such a unique and, and just an amazing champ, obviously. But yeah, and here, uh, you know, I, I don't have to worry about my, my decks being nullified and converted into armor break and uh, poison because I'm not on buffet. I did take him earlier in the season on buffet and that was uh, kind of an issue because buffet kept uh, nullifying my, my dexterity. So here, it's just basic quake fight. Just make sure that you start charging your heavy at 251 and, and you're set. Okay, now this node, uh, this Havoc, um, if you guys are trying to uh, path plan and you have Quake, but for whatever reason, like maybe you don't have um, Warlock or you can't fit him on your team or something or a guillotine, um, you guys certainly can Quake Havoc. You're probably going to take an L1, maybe two L1s. Um, but I mean, you'll, you know, you're not going to die from that. So it's just kind of more about being smart with your resources and making sure that uh, you're not costing yourself too much health or items. Um, in this fight against Warlock, you know, what I'm trying to do is, is get those bleeds off so that uh, I'll be draining his power. And, um, you know, really the only the only concern or the only thing that you got to be careful of is uh, Warlock's heavy. You have to time it properly. Otherwise, you might actually miss when you're trying to counter his heavy. So you got to let him get a little bit further into his animation 
on the heavy um, havoc. I'm talking about before you launch your own heavy. Otherwise, you could whiff, and then he'll he'll pop you with his heavy, and, and that's not good. That's going to put feedback on you, um, and feedback is is a pretty powerful uh, DOT effect. So um, here it's just another very standard quake fight. You'll actually see in this fight. I don't know if I screwed up the timing on the on the concussion, um, or if this is just kind of the norm. I don't seem to remember having an issue with regen, but um, yeah, I mean you'll see that she. There are a couple instances where she does regen from the buffet as I'm dexing. So I'm just like, all right, screw this. I'm just gonna go to a straight parry style. And as long as I don't hit Morning Star, I don't have to worry about her bleed. So. Um, I think here I'm just going to start parrying just so that I don't have to worry about the, um, the regen. But yeah, overall, pretty simple fight there. Okay, and now I've got Guillotine 2099. Um, I've taken her a couple times now this season with Quake on this node. And again, her health pool is so small that, I mean, it's... It's a really, it's really a safe fight for Quake. Um, her, you know, her mediums and lights and stuff, like with her sword, it, it just, sometimes it, I guess it can throw off the animation a little bit, like make you think that you're getting hit when you're not, but, um, yeah, I mean, this is basically just, you know, don't mess up, and even if you do mess up, you, you do have quite a bit of uh, room for error in this fight. I think most um, moderate Quakers could probably take this fight without any issue. She does proc her regen there, of course, so um, just extending this fight a little bit longer than you know it would be if uh, if you had concussion on her, <clears throat> but you can't obviously because it's debuffing you. So. Um, yeah, pretty pretty simple. So um, here I've got what what I think is the last fight of this war. At the time, I'm thinking, all right, cool. So uh, Mojo is going to be taken by somebody else, and um, I do use a power start one boost. So I'm going to go ahead and let her just hit me. Now, normally I would just take a single combo, but since she threw two mediums back to back, I thought maybe I could squeeze in another combo there. But um, I ended up losing, you know, a decent chunk of health, about a third of my health, but. Um, you know, it does get me to two bars of power. And, you know, the key in this fight is just to get her power locked as quickly as possible. And then, obviously, to not screw up. And if you can get her power locked, um, magic is obviously a champ that's been in the game for a very long time. So her animations are very basic. Just block, since it's stun immune, and uh, bait her heavy out, and then counter with the combo into the L2. And um, this is... Really, I think one of the easiest fights in war if you're using magic. Any other attacker here, I think it can get pretty dicey with flow. Um, so, you know, I'm sure that it's doable with Omega, probably Archangel as well. But again, I mean, if you have magic, it's just super easy to, um, you know, it's just a very safe fight. So, well, I am going to end up taking this boss here. Uh, the person who was slotted for it was having some game input issues, um, and uh, I asked uh, B Manny if he wouldn't mind doing a little commentary over it, so he did provide some voiceover, and uh, I'm just going to be quiet, let him do his thing. All right, Taters, let's see if I can give you a play-by-play uh, a -play here, do a little voiceover on my phone. Good start, good start. <laughs> Now you really do get off to an awesome start here. Uh, you weren't in limbo, so don't need a combo. Got a solid intercept. Fight that's under control pretty quick for you right here. Of course, uh, you're slow to punish this. You got whacked. So that's one little thing. It's not too bad. I mean, it happens. Next thing coming up is once you've gotten pinned against the wall and you failed to stand up intercept, just go ahead and hit into his block twice or three times and back up and do a light attack intercept, but that was still pretty safe. Your light attacks were on point. Good stand up. You accidentally did four lights right there, but that's okay. Didn't cost you.
perfect. Just wait. Don't try to hit into him. Once you whiff and they stand there, he will parry you. Unless he's holding block. Huh. Okay. Perfect. Nailed it. It's alright. It's a hater, but that's okay. Right there, you could have went for a two hit block, uh, dash back, and light attack intercept, but you're nailing some of these. Great fight, man. Uh, I think it all boiled down to just you being late to punish that one heavy. Uh, I think it was early in the fight. Otherwise, that's a one shot, man. Keep your head up. Good, good, good fight. Good war. As well, this next fight uh, plays out a little bit. I just wanted to talk about war and for Loki, and one of the reasons war and for Loki is is so uh, enjoyable, and why we continue to push despite the poor rewards uh, for our time and effort. And it's really comes down to kind of what you guys heard from B. Manny. Um, we're always trying to help each other out. Um, we're constantly sharing our fights and, um, you know, sharing constructive feedback with each other just to try to get better. It really is a team oriented environment. There's not a lot of finger pointing. Um, there's really, there's no finger pointing unless somebody truly needs to be called out, which is rare, but um, it's just a good environment for players who want to get better and enjoy the competition of the game, which is really what we're all in it for. The other thing that you've probably noticed watching my videos, and I guess it depends on what skill level you are, but in terms of skill, I'm not one of the best players in 4 Loki by any stretch. Um, but we all kind of have our uh, our value to the Alliance, and, um, and again, we're just all helping each other out. It just makes it a lot more enjoyable. So um, here is my war. I ended up with a 7.7 .7 power rating, which is pretty decent. I think that that was eighth overall for this war. Here's my season stat card. Um, I'm still at that 87% solar rate, so I'm 40 and 6. Three of my deaths are to bosses. I just, I'm going to stop taking bosses altogether, but I'm 6 overall in the Alliance and power rating, just under 44. Here's uh, my comparison with Dreamin'. Um, he only had two fights this past war, strictly based on matchups and the fact that he was grinding for Red Guardian, but uh, he dropped down to third overall in the Alliance, uh, but he's still perfect, of course. And then uh, the silver card comes to our returning member, Bryn, um, who came back to BG3. We're super happy to have him back. He had an awesome war, and then, of course, B Manny uh, took 12 fights, including the boss. He just dominated the war. And he's also our uh, Legend Series card this week, too, So, or for this war. Highest career, cumulative power rating in 4Loki history. Pretty cool. Um, so anyway, there are the cards, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got something out of it. Leave a like and a comment. Um, let me know what you thought. And uh, you will see another war video for me um, in a couple days.